Well, 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 we're back for another hot season. We're still here. And here's your host. Hey everybody, good morning and welcome to this edition of Crystal's Hot Seat. We are in John Settle's office today, so we are putting him actually in the hot seat in his own office. Good morning to you. I'm good morning to you. Uh, is the seat hot yet? It is, and I like it hot. If it's if it gets cold, I just stir it up and make it even hotter. <laughs> well, you have definitely been stirring up some stuff in Shreveport, I tell you. I try to go to all the council meetings yes. and key committee meetings, mm -hmm. and the same with the commission. And that's the only way you can really keep track of what those respective bodies are doing, if you go to the meetings and do the research and things like that. You know, most people do not go to those meetings. Well, they're in the afternoon, and that's that's hard to get to. They are taped, but it's not the same watching it on TV because the camera on TV just generally focuses on the person that's speaking on the council. And if you get there early yeah. and you talk to them and you kind of know the backroom maneuvering and the real issues, uh, it's kind of fun to, uh, to watch it unfold, but it, it's a totally different experience if you're there in person versus watching the tape. And then you can go up to them afterwards and ask why they voted that way or vice versa. You know. Wow. And so regular people can do this. They can oh, yeah. Go and do the vote. Yeah, yeah. It's, okay. a, yeah it's, it's open to anyone. It's a government plaza, mm -hmm. the, the meetings. And they love to have citizens there. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you have definitely been doing your research. Um, we may have a change in Shreveport come November. Changes. Well, we're going to have some changes. Um, we have at, at least three new council people because three of the city council people are termed out. They cannot serve more than two consecutive terms. Right. So Jeff Everson from District B is in Bravo, is, will be replaced by a new person. Uh, Oliver Jenkins in District C, or Charlie, will be replaced by a new person. And Mike Corbin in District D, or Delta, will be replaced by a new person. We have three of the other council people have challengers. Potentially, you could have six new people on a seven-person council. I don't see that, but in, you could have six new players and one holdover on the city council. Mm -hmm. Wow. All right, so we are just getting started this morning with John Settle. He is sitting in the hot seat today. And again, you, we were talking about you, you've been doing your research, lots of, lots of work that you've put into just the people running for office here in the, the Shreveport area. Very interesting. Tell us, um, you're going to these meetings. Tell us, where, where do you get your passion? I don't know. I, I guess because I ran for city council a long time ago and I lost. <laughs> and uh, I, I don't know. It's always been interesting to me. And then I, I started writing and have kind of learned how to write better. And so now I'm being published. I'm thankful I'm being published in three local publications okay. uh, ten times a month. Okay. So uh, it's it's grown into a, a, a was a passion or interest, then a, a hobby, and now it's a passion. So it's a I spend a, a good bit of my time since I'm retired from law working on government and the issues and things like that. And you were definitely pointing out some things. Well, let's go ahead and start up with the mayor's race. So we may have a new mayor in Shreveport coming up in November. What's your thought on that? Well, it's possible. We have a nine in the race, four are pretenders. There's really only four serious challengers. Uh, it's possible that Tyler will be replaced. If so, it would, it would probably be by either Adrian Perkins. Okay or Steven Jackson. I do not see a white candidate winning the mayorship in Shreveport. It's possible, but I, I don't believe that'll happen. You said four You said four contenders. Who are those four? Uh, well, I'm, all right, we have four challengers. We have Mayor Tyler as the incumbent. Mm -hmm. Then we have Adrian Perkins is a challenger. Steven Jackson is a challenger. And then the two white challengers are Lee O. Savage and Jim Talaferro. So okay. those are the top five mm -hmm contenders for that seat yeah so uh and there's four others that are will won't make a, a splash in the pond at all jim talaferro so he's been in law enforcement for a little while and i'm sure everybody's fed up you you hear the news all the shootings in shreveport every day it seems what do you think he would bring to the table if he was elected well for all four four of the the challengers to mayor tyler perkins jackson Tyler Farrell and Savage have all said that they first thing they're going to do yes. is replace the police chief. Yes. All right, so that's the first thing out of the box. Mm -hmm. Secondly, Leo Savage has said that Rod Demery would be his chief. Rod Demery uh, had a distinguished a career at SPD, Shreveport Police Department, investigating murders. Uh, he went to the DA's office, 
and he has that TV series Murder Chose Me. He's now retired from the DA's office, and uh, he's Sab sat in this hot seat before. So we yeah, so talk so he's he's will be Savage's appointment. Uh, Talaferro has law enforcement experience uh, that would help him select a, a police chief, a new chief. So, do we need a new police chief? I. I think so. Uh, when when a mayor selected uh, Chief Crump, I wrote a column that uh, was critical of the selection, and it was critical because on the of all the people who took the civil service exam, his score was the second lowest. Experience wise, he had less hands-on law enforcement experience. He had mainly been a school community resource officer, mm -hmm. so. Uh, I like him and I respect his position, but I really believe he's over his head. Uh, I said that when she selected him. I wrote columns pointing out why mm -hmm. I thought he was not the best choice, and uh, I still don't think he's the best choice. Now, I don't know that the crime situation is totally his responsibility. I don't say that, mm -hmm. but I do think that there could have been a better choice for police chief. Now, you mentioned a few minutes ago that you think that we're going to have an African-American person leader leading uh, the city of Shreveport, which is a complete change. You know, we've had uh, Cedric Glover, now Ali Tyler. Why do you think we're still going into that direction? Well, the demographics are such that uh, we have approximately 50-50 black-white voters, but uh, white voters cross over uh, much more than the black voters do. And the two um, white candidates don't have much appeal in the black community. The last uh, white candidate had a, a good deal of appeal was Keith Hightower yes, yes. when he ran, and he defeated an incumbent, but um, he was uh, very outgoing. He um, struck some deals to bring in more blacks into th to the city as far as key jobs, city attorney, and stuff like that. So uh, these two candidates are working hard, but I don't think they have uh, a base in the black community that would get them enough crossover votes to get there. I'm pretty sure they don't. Voter turnout, what do you think about that? I think it, I think it could be very low. Uh, you have to remember that uh, we don't have an Obama on the, the ballot like we did uh, before. Yeah. Uh, we don't have Mary Landrew in the race. Mary Landrew was running for re-election. She was defeated. And on top of that, the first vote is on a Tuesday. It's a federal primary day on November 6th, a Tuesday. Louisiana voters are used to going to the polls more on Saturday. Yeah. So I, was, I think that the turnout could really be lower than normal because there's not any big names uh, out there that are going to pull people out. That I'm going out to vote for Mary or for Obama, and I'll also check the box on these others. And a Tuesday... Uh, it's not as convenient for working people, and especially if we have bad weather. So I think the, the, the turnout could be, you know, low on the primary. And that means that a runoff, the two runoff seats could be decided by 500 votes or so. You know, that's not a lot of votes. It's, it's going to be interesting how it plays out in the next 60 days. Uh, what's been the response like from some of the people running for office? I mean, you've been writing about them in their background, doing lots of research. Well, um... When you bring out facts, the facts are either good, they're okay, or they're bad. And my columns, which are out there, 10 times a month published, they're factually based. Now, I some draw some conclusions. You may disagree with my conclusions, but the facts, you can't argue with. So a lot of people are unhappy that I brought out facts that they didn't want the public to know about, or that maybe they didn't like the conclusions that I, that I drew from it. But it's important for voters to know a lot about the candidates, and oftentimes that's what the press is supposed to do. You and I are supposed to help educate the voters on issues that the candidates themselves aren't necessarily going to bring to the table. All right, well, hold that thought. We want to have you stay right here in the hot seat, so don't go away. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're going to keep you right there. Right. Pace and Bills will be right back after this commercial break, so stay with us. Special times or dinner time. It's all about the glass. Libby Factory Outlet. Glasses for every occasion. Stephen Jackson won't even speak to me because he's mad that I wrote about his, um, his tickets 
and uh, he wouldn't even speak to me at the commission meetings. I mean, if he's at a commission meeting, he's going, and he walks by me, and I'll say, good morning, Steve. He will not even speak to me. Wow, wow. And, you know, I'm at a, at a public meeting, and, you know, you're elected official. Yo, he said, no, hell, I helped him get elected before. I gave him the maximum contribution, a thousand in the primary, a thousand runoffs. He's running in off with Michael Williams, who had the problems with Swag Nation. I wrote some strong columns. He won't even speak to me. I sent him an email today asking, are you going to open campaign headquarters? I said, it's going to go in the Sunday paper. If yeah. you don't give me a comment, I'll say, Jackson would not give me a comment. Wow. We will be right back with John Seto. Sweet new wheels. A little pre-celebration for the big day, huh? I'm making partner, baby. <clears throat> Time to break that glass ceiling. We all know who deserves this. Give it up for our Summit Worldwide Sports Management's newest partner. Oh! Ah! Uh, Allie, that pass was actually to Eddie. Woo! All right. <laughs> yeah! I'm so sick of this boys' club. Every day is day. You don't connect well with men. Just stay in your lane. I don't trust women who don't get dudes. Like I don't trust a man with no eyebrows and too many keys. I know someone you should talk to. I can help you connect with men. Why don't we have some tea? This smells like dirt. Oh, that's just jasmine tea. If you don't count the weed, and the peyote, and the crack. Oh, hello, welcome back. Miss Davis? Thank God this one didn't die on me. Starting today, no more drinking at work. Hey, that's too much information. I didn't say anything. I feel weird after last night. Yeah. That's what happens when tequila meets desperation. Okay, stop saying things you shouldn't be saying to your boss. Holy crap. Can you hear my inner thoughts? I can hear your inner thoughts. Oh, oh my god. I can only hear men's thoughts. That cloud you're walking through, that's my farts. Yeah. It was a psychic. She gave me this tea. And, and you drank it? She said to. I thought black people stopped drinking tea after get out. Why weren't you complaining about men trying to keep you down? Do we have any meetings on the books? Nothing yet, except the private poker game tonight. This is not a curse. This is a gift. You better think, think about the I should tap that ass. Little lady, what you doing at the big boy's table, huh? Two grand. I'm bluffing these fools. I'm missing Real Housewives. Shaq finally has a winning hand. Why am I thinking in the third person? I smell toast. Am I having a stroke? Wait, I have toast in my pocket. Whew. Hey everybody, good morning and welcome to this edition of Crystal's Hot Seat. Good morning, good morning. If you're just waking up, we have John Settle here in this hot seat with us this morning talking about just the, the changes that we may see in November in the city of Shreveport. And you write several publications. Um, how can people uh, locate you or read your articles? Tell us about that. Well, uh, uh, I'm in the, the Sunday Times. I'm in the Inquisitor, which is weekly, and the Forum, which is bi-monthly. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a website called settletalk.com, S-E-T-T-L-E-T-A-L-K.com. All of my co uh, columns are there. And if people, it has my email address, if they'll email me, I'll add them to a, a mailing list of about 4,400 people that gets them automatically. Now, what's what's your email if people at home want to email it, you? It's something? easy. It's john, J-O-H-N, at J-E settle, S-E-T-T-L-E, dot com. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. And uh, there, there's some issues that I think uh, about the candidates, whether they voted regularly, whether they own a house or not whether they've had problems with law enforcement. Um, and uh, I think those issues, uh, voters need to know. I'm not saying they shouldn't be elected because of that, but I think voters should see the full picture on a candidate uh, as far as their background and what they've done, good, bad, and indifferent, because the push cards are going to always say how great they are. You know, I'm great, great, great. But, that's, very, but, that's a good point. So Absolutely. I try to bring out other facts that, that I think should be should be known about people. You know. All right, now, Mr. Settle, you are in the hot seat. So can you think of or give us an example after your investigations where there's been any changes 
uh, maybe a candidate has stepped down because of an article that was written about them or just well, any changes? Well, there is one. Um, Dana Cawthon was running in District D, Delta, and I wrote her a couple times and I said, I think you may have a conflict of interest because she was working uh, with the SBA and helping businesses. And she did check with her superiors up the line, and they did, told her that if she was elected, she would not be able to keep her job because there's a Hatch Act that uh, says that if, if you're federally funded, you can't be in another political office. Um, there hadn't many other candidates drop out. There have been some that have kind of cleaned up their act a little bit. Uh, Steve Jackson now has a valid inspection sticker on the car he drives. Uh, last year he had two problems where he was stopped and didn't have the correct plates on his car and expired inspection sticker because he didn't have any insurance. And but, at, but at one point you did back Stephen Jackson. Oh yeah, I backed okay. him when, and that's important point you need to realize, just because I backed a candidate in a prior election doesn't mean I'm not going to call them out for what they do once they're elected. And I think that's fair. I helped Stephen get elected to the commission with financial contributions and columns for him and against the incumbent Michael Williams, but I still feel like I can tell him if I think he's not doing his job and here's why. And I've done that with some of the city councilmen on their votes. I don't expect them to always agree with me, but if, but uh, just because I've endorsed a candidate doesn't mean in a prior I won't now uh, call them out. Another example is Stephanie Lynch. I mean, I like Stephanie. I, gave, I helped her kind of last time, but Stephanie doesn't come to any meetings anymore. Her absentee rate is ab abysmal. This year, she's missed more work session regular meetings she's attended. Mm -hmm. That's unfortunate for her constituents. And I've written about it, and she didn't like it, but it's a fact. Wow. And so I think her constituents need to know that. Uh, so those are the kind of things that if you want good government, you try to get the best people elected. At the same time, you hold them accountable. They're paid to go to meetings. Mm -hmm. They're paid to know what's happening. And they're they're paid to make good decisions. If they don't go to meetings or they don't read their materials or they just make a knee-jerk vote, I think it's fair to say, hey, you could have done a better job. Now, everybody says that they want good government. We all say the <laughs> same thing, you know, but that it's a different meaning, you know, for different people. I mean, would you say that social media has dumbed down the society? You know, it's uh, it's become a new thing, and, and it has, I believe so, and there's been an article uh too often issues get twisted, uh, people get emotional. It's called instant spread your thought pattern. Or and fake uh, news. Yes. Fake news. Yeah, and uh, there, there was a big article that I just read in the um, Wall Street Journal that said that that like the issue of crime is crime. The mayor insists the crime is down, but because crime sells, or uh, you know, every TV station has crime on it, and people. Uh, talk about it with social media. I mean, we had a, a lady murdered, and she's on her phone mm -hmm. and saying, don't shoot me, don't shoot me. So social media has had a positive impact and more likely a negative impact on people evaluating candidates. You know, you were in the hot seat with us this morning. If you can choose the next leader of the city of Shreveport, who would that be and why? <sighs> Today, if they were elected. I would want a new person than uh, Mayor Tyler. Mayor Tyler is a good person. She's helped get the city uh, more organized. She's an administrator. I don't think that she's shown any great leadership as far as uh, improving the quality of life or bringing in jobs or things like that. She has run the city, helped the city run well as an administrator. But I think that we're doing the same old, same old. And I think we need new blood in the city is what I think we need. Uh, and so um, at the same time, um, a lot of people may go with Mayor Tyler because they, they know what they're going to get. It's going to be this and be that. And, and so that's a tough choice. All right, well, when we come back, we're going to get your final thoughts on who you, because you never said one specific person. So, hey, that's that's a politician there for you. <laughs> okay. So we're going to keep you right there, a chain to the hot seat, and we'll be right back after this commercial break. Stay with us, you guys. Special times or dinner time. 
It's all about the glass. Libby Factory Outlet, glasses for every occasion. Close captions brought to you by iKoalaRadio.com. It's just music, baby. It's amazing to meet you. It is simply extraordinary. Maybe this will all make sense if I explain who I am. My name is Dr. Ellie Staple, and I'm a psychiatrist. My work concerns a particular type of delusion of grandeur. It's a growing field. I specialize in those individuals who believe they are superheroes. <laughs> Good for you. The three of you have convinced yourselves you have extraordinary gifts like something out of a comic book. David Dunn, the only person to survive that train wreck all those years ago. What do you do? I'm in security. You think you have superpowers? It's a feeling. Vision. I have to touch them. You believe you are a protector. My name is Patricia. I have no question. There are two dozen identities. I'm Mary Reynolds. Por favor, senora. We almost got you, bro. That live in that body with you. The beast. It's coming any minute now for you guys. But what I am questioning is your belief that you are something more than human. And yet, it is true. My bones break easily. I've had 94 breaks in my life. But you have an extraordinary IQ. This is not a cartoon. This is the real world. No. Way. And yet, some of us still don't die with bullets. Some of us can still bend steel. I've been waiting for the world to see that we exist. May I meet the beast? I hope for your sake that he likes you. That sounds like the bad guys teaming up. A lot of people are going to die. Don't do this. Are you ready? What do we call you, sir? First name, Mr. Last name, Glass. Good morning to you. If you're just joining us, you have missed a great conversation we've been having. We've been picking the brain of John Settle, a political commentator now. You've changed your career a little bit here. Well, I basically retired from law, and uh, this is much more fun. I think all of the people running for office need to realize that the world is changed in Shreveport, and not necessarily for the good. We're losing population. We're losing voters. We're losing good jobs. And these leaders, mayor and their councilmen, we've got to start voting for needs over wants. A good example is the city uh, spent uh, about a hundred thousand dollars on the Miss, uh, uh, Miss USA Miss USA contest, yes. uh -huh. and and out of uh, tax dollars. Mm -hmm. And I did an analysis of it, using every number that the Tourist and Convention Bureau gave and said if all that had been spent in the city of Shreveport, we would have made maybe 30000 And we know it wasn't all spent there because Bozier was part of that. And that's an example, well, did we really get that much out of it? Yeah. I mean, and that said, well, that's only $70,000. But I think that the city leaders have got to address the fact that needs over wants, and that's an example. And there's others out there where what we used to do is not working. And we have less people, and we have the taxes are high. And so we've got to just honestly deal with that. The same situation with Cross Bayou when they wanted to have the city uh, build a sports arena. Um, 
sports arenas nationwide lose money. There's not a city in the nation, that if you look at it, that, that they haven't had to subsidize a sports arena. And, and all that would be well and good, but is that what we really need to have? And uh, so I think it's, 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 it's going to take a new attitude of saying we just can't do all the things we used to do or want to do until we start building population and building businesses and building the overall sales tax revenue for the city, which comes from businesses and not real estate taxes. And that's, that's not an easy job to do, to go in and say we, we're going to have to do more with less. Uh, but that's, that's the reality of where we are. But, but how can we change that? So you're encouraging people to do their research more so into these candidates. Well, I think that the citizens have to make it clear to their elected people that we can't do the frills. If we need more police officers on the street, we don't need to spend 100000 on the, the beauty pageant. pageant. Yeah. What would that 100000 have done for more officers over time? or other issues that, that are out there. Another one that's going to have the new mayor is going to have to deal with this report common, where we're going to have, we're investing several million dollars in a downtown park area, and some people are concerned, is that going to draw more people that we really want or draw people that we don't want? Right. And uh, those aren't easy questions to deal with, but they're real questions uh, that, have, that have to be concerned with, just like the Cross Bayou development, and other issues, we've just got to, to look at hard decisions. Another one is, are we going to rebuild the, the riverfront when it's going to flood again? It's already flooded twice. The city spent right. a couple hundred thousand dollars cleaning up sand. It's going to flood again. Well, Mr. Settle, we're almost out of time. But what would you say, what would you like for people to know about your work? What would you like for your work to say for you in all the end of all the research, countless hours that you've been doing? Well, uh, I... Sometimes people read a column and, and uh, don't agree with me, and I don't expect them to always agree with me because I don't write bedtime stories or yeah. fairy tales. Okay. But what I do promise citizens are is that my columns, the facts are correct, and my facts are there. So I encourage them to look at the facts and draw their own conclusion. They may agree with my conclusion or may not, but at least absorb the facts so that they have that in their decision-making process, not just something that they've heard on social media. Absolutely. All right. So we thank you so much for joining us in the hot seat. We're out of time, but do the research and and don't do the monkey see, monkey do. There that you sums go. I up like today. That. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, we thank you for joining us, being in the hot seat. We had so much fun with you. Oh, well, I want to do it again. All <laughs> Hopefully right. You didn't sweat too much. Oh I, well, I'm, I'm, yeah. Okay. So I took my coat off. <laughs> All right. Well, we want to thank you at home. We will see you guys bright and early next Sunday morning, same time, same place. We'll see you then. I'm Crystal Whitman and the hot seat.